This is a new indie teen drama about four bored college girls who want to rebel, who want to let their hair down and go and party in Florida on spring break. So they do just that, breaking umpteen laws as they do. Written and directed by Harmony Kareen, a man who it's fair to say has had a bit of controversy in his time, not least with his first movie, Kids, which he wrote back in the 90s. Famously deemed immoral in some quarters, got an NC-17 rating in the States. To some, Harmony Crean is, is edgy and experimental. To others, he's a talentless hipster who really needs to get off his skateboard and grow up. His wife stars in this, she's called Rachel Crean, um, along with Vanessa Hudgens and Selena Gomez, meeting up with a seriously sleazy James Franco along the way. Morning. Who are you? My name's Aileen. My real name's Al, but truth be told, I ain't from this planet, y'all. Alien? That's what they call me. Why are you here? I saw y'all in there. They like nice people. Thought maybe I'd bail you out. Everyone could use a little bailing out once in a while. Come on, y'all. Why are you acting suspicious? Get in. Where are we going? Go wherever you all want. Cotty. Got the right idea? Come on. I'll be your chauffeur. Give me a chauffeur. Yeah. You all can play Beyonce. <laughs> He's certainly one of the creepiest characters in uh, in recent cinema. Mm, it's uh, a good it's a good point when he m m is in the st film when he arrives in the film you're ready for him aren't you and he yeah. just just rolls with it after that. And and actually you know I think there's a lot that's good about the film and I also think we're on the lookout for a cool new cult teen movie. We're in the market for that mm. and this is frustratingly close to being that brilliant new cult teen movie, the new True Romance or um, Pineapple Express, of course, that James Franco was in. It looks fab. The editing, the lighting, excitingly chaotic to watch. Really thumping soundtrack as well. Skrillex and Cliff Martinez doing that. And there is some fun in seeing these former clean-cut Disney princesses, Selena Gomez and, and Vanessa Hudgens, grubby up. I mean, that's deliberate. That's why they're in there. Mm. And, and and there is some fun to be seen, uh, to be had from that novelty. And, like we said, I think the main point is that James Franco is amazing. Um, someone described him as a cross between Bo Derek in 10 and <laughs> Richard Keel, who was Jaws in those Bond movies, which I think is an amazing uh, description. That's wonderful, yeah. He has uh, the cornrows. Yeah. He's got the grills. But all of those good things, I think there is one crucial thing missing from Spring Breakers that stops it being a classic. And that's just that the script is pretty awful. It's pretty non-existent. Sometimes it, it gets very po-faced because um, I think Harmony Korean wants to sort of turn this story of basically four people partying into something spiritual. He wants to make it something really important and intellectual and deep. Uh, and then on the flip side, sometimes things happen that are just really silly and unbelievable. And of course, there's not the dialogue or the script to really back it up and make it believable. So it is a bit all over the place script wise. The script seems to be lagging behind the rest of the film, which looks great and sounds great, but just the words aren't that great. What, of course, I think ultimately they're trying to celebrate is just... It's just student lifestyle. It's the joy of hedonism, isn't it? Mm. You know, but you do. But you do think, okay. So this is shot in America, where it's yeah. really hot and it's really sunny and it's really wonderful all the time. They can kind of jump in that swimming pools that. and they yeah. can frolic on the the balconies. That doesn't happen so much when you're in Kiel, or Kiel University, or <laughs> Manchester, or Hull, or somewhere like that. No, that would be it, there'd be a lot of goose flesh on it display doesn't. then. But I think I think it's it's wish fulfillment. Yeah. I mean, you, you watch this and think, wow, if only I had this kind of student lifestyle. Um, Did and, you really? No, well, I wish that I could have done. Yeah, because it just looked it was just endless partying and craziness mm. but of course you know even you can even make a film about partying and craziness and drugs and all the all the mad things that happen in this film and still give the audience some insight and that's what it's lacking it gives it all of the hedonism but without any real sort of insight i mean we talked about danny boyle earlier of course train spotting is mm -hmm. a classic example a film about partying and a film about clubbing and a film about drugs, but actually it also has something to say as well. Spring Breakers is sorely lacking in the something to say department, and that's the real problem with it. And, you know, in parts, it does just look exploitative. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, I will talk about my family because it is kind of relevant. As the mother yeah. of a, you know, a, a girl who's 21, um, you watch it, and I, I just wanted to run out of the cinema after the first 15 minutes because I just thought, I don't want to watch this. And it's not because I was being um, prudish or I wasn't thinking thinking, oh, I don't know, want to know what she gets up to because that's her bag. It's more about this is kind of exploiting these women because there are real close-ups 
and it's mainly about women. You know, there are yeah. some boys in there and, and everyone is absolutely beautiful and they all look absolutely fabulous. But at times I felt really uncomfortable with it. By the end of the movie, I did really enjoy it and I thought it looked wonderful, but yeah. still felt quite uncomfortable with that. And if you back that up with, with some sort of message, then that's fair enough. Mm. But I'm afraid Spring Breakers doesn't. You know, it might end up as a, as a sort of trashy B movie, people who go to watch it, because it is so bad it's intriguing. Mm. And that's one thing. But I think, like I said, we're in the market for something that's truly a classic. Mm. Um, and I don't think Spring Breakers is that. Very, very close. Mm. But there is not a quite. scene with James Franco on the piano, and there's a Britney Spears song, yeah, and there random. are pink balaclavas. It's random, but it's really powerful and it's beautiful. Very beautiful moment. Yeah. But we needed more of those.